a dress book, calendar, music player, and computer. But today, the market is flooded with feature-laden combination gadgets that fit in the palm of your hand, each rendering a previous version obsolete. The aptly named Palm Incorporated in Sunnyvale, California, pioneered the granddaddy of must-have pocket tools. In 1997, we came out with the Palm Pilot. This really represented cultural phenomena in mobile computing because it gave you a way of entering information on the go without a full keyboard. It was a stylus-based interaction where you would actually write in characters. It actually forced you to learn a very specific way to write your letters. Despite the added effort required on the part of the user, this glorified address book was surprisingly successful and entered the vernacular as a synonym for personal digital assistance, or PDAs, regardless of the brand. The original Palm Pilot had your contacts, it had tasks and memos, basic calculator, and it organized it into one place with one magical killer app. That killer app was synchronization with your computer, so all of that information was protected. While the Palm Pilot was organizing your life, the cell phone was keeping you in touch. By today's standards, the early versions were pricey, unreliable, and goofy looking. But it was freedom from the cord, and that was worth it. If you had one of these, you were pretty cool. The evolution of cellular phones rendered some old faithfuls obsolete. From rotary dial models and pay phones to car phones, some even predict the demise of the hallowed landline, the cornerstone of modern communication that served us so well since the days of Alexander Graham Bell. Today, the cell phone meets the organizer, meets the computer, and a bunch of other features. It's called the smartphone, and unlike its ancestors, it has a keyboard. And it's still smaller. Keyboards are a big story because they are the transition from handhelds to smartphones. The unconventional wisdom here is that really big full-size keyboards work, but tiny keyboards work just as well because you're using your thumbs. The smartphone is a nail in the coffin for many of our trusty devices because it really is the sum of its parts. Our first real iconic phone, which was the Trio 600 in 2003, was one of the first true smartphones. And then in 2007, we delivered Centro, which is putting an incredible amount of power into a tiny package, but also making it really inexpensive and accessible. The phone is evolving in not one direction, but in multiple directions. It's going to be your bank. It's going to be your credit card. It's going to be your educational tool. It's going to be your training tool. It's going to be your radio. It's going to be your keys. It's going to be how you buy things, how you board a plane. This is going to be your ticket for your next airplane flight. You see, it's evolving into many, many aspects of different infrastructure that will be all merged together in a wireless way because that phone is going to get smarter and smarter. But will all these advantages render face-to-face -face human interaction obsolete? The biggest problem with smartphones is we don't always have smart users. Uh, we get addicted to the phone so much that we forget a very important thing. There's a time to plug in and a time to unplug. The computer chips used to get your information around are the same ones that control how you get around. But while some things go obsolete, 